Hello UT and hello the world. I'm your host, Andrew Rosas. What makes a machine intelligent? Is it its ability to reason, draw conclusions, not blow its money on lottery tickets? Well, it turns out AI is so hard to define because of the myriad applications and disciplines that can use AI, and because intelligence itself is so hard to define. Many of us know AI by what we've seen in the movies. A mechanical boy learns to love, not wildly intelligent. A time-traveling robot assassin learns how to remain in a franchise from a boy who wouldn't be so lucky. And Chappie the robot learns chemistry and concocts a powerful box office poison. But luckily, AI isn't all bad. In fact, some experts in the field theorize that cities of the future will be full of this technology and it will change our lives. And we got to sit down with Dr. Peter Stone, professor of computer science here at UT, who just published a report on life with AI in the year 2030. So doctor, please, can you help us define AI? AI is a set of technologies, computational technologies, that are inspired by and in some ways mimic the kinds of things people do with their brains, bodies, and nervous systems that we consider intelligent. Another way, another definition that's sort of tongue-in-cheek that I like, though, is trying to get computers to do the things they can't do yet. And when you think about it that way, in some sense, artificial intelligence is always a changing, um, a changing field. The kinds of things that we worked on in the field of AI 20 years ago, many of those things have been solved and they're no longer considered artificial intelligence, and now we're working on a new set of problems. AI is already here in many ways. Some people aren't sure whether to love it or hate it. I mean, what if a Roomba becomes self-aware and steals all my valuable possessions? which on my salary would be my Roomba. So doctor, can you tell us about the different attitudes towards AI and what we can reasonably expect for the future? There's sort of two different uh, extreme attitudes people tend to take towards AI. One is fear that it's gonna, you know, take over the world, the robots are gonna become conscious and, uh, and you know, do things that we would never have wanted to, to, to do. The other is extreme excitement and thinking, oh, AI, you know, we can create a car that can drive itself or a program that can beat the human champion at chess or Jeopardy or Go, and therefore it's gonna be able to solve all the world's problems and, and you know, we'll never have to work again. One of the big misconceptions about AI is that it's just one thing, that there's a general purpose algorithm that you can just sprinkle it on and anything else and make it more intelligent. It might be possible to create cars that can drive themselves. It might be able, possible to create a robot that can fold your laundry, but one does not imply the other. Each, each requires sustained long-term research and development, and that's true of any other, any other problem. Clearly, artificial intelligence has had to overcome many obstacles just to get to where we are today. Complex mathematics, processing limitations, Steve. So what are the problems AI faces now looking into the next 15 years? There are potential benefits. For instance, um, computer programs that can identify diseases more quickly and accurately than, than uh, human doctors might be able to, or um, being able to identify um, ahead of time potential uh, areas for, for crime um, and being able to, to you know, secure them ahead of time. Um, but for each of these, there's also challenges and barriers towards them having really uh, the impact that they're, and realizing their potential impacts. Some of them technical. So, you know, can we create physical robots that are able to navigate around your house without bumping into things? Um, can we create software that's able to identify potential crime areas but without incorporating uh, biases? Um, those are technical challenges. In some cases, there's more social challenges. Will the doctors and the patients trust the recommendations of an artificial intelligence program? Um, in other cases, uh, there are more legal and policy questions. What will, what will the laws be around uh, self-driving cars when they get in an accident or the insurance policies? With AI revolutionizing our cities, what will that mean for jobs of the future? If the uh, automotive industries are successful in creating fully self-driving cars, that might um, change the landscape of, of you know, what jobs are needed in terms of, um, of drivers. As we say explicitly in our report, um, it's a lot easier to imagine the jobs that are going to be replaced than than the, um, than the new ones that will be created. And you know, th there were, for instance, there used to be people that, that, that connected every phone call you made. They were the operators. Um, and when the switches were created, those operators were out of, out of a job, but you know, companies like Cisco now employ many, many people. And that would have been hard to imagine before, uh, you know, before the, the uh, automatic switch was, was created. Besides automobiles that can drive us home and homes that are driven by automation, what are the most exciting benefits of a future with AI, and what are we as humans charged with going forward? It's clear that there's a potential for a lot more productivity um, from society, that overall society will become wealthier through these technologies. Um, 
but this will lead also to the problem, you know, the question or the risk of, of you know, how will that wealth be um, distributed in a way that, that it doesn't create too much concentration in the hands of a few. These are, in the report, we explicitly call out, you know, that now's the right time to start having that conversation and, uh, and you know, try to think about what is society's um, attitude going to, going to be towards you know how, how the um, the benefits of AI should be uh, should be treated and allocated across society. My thanks to Dr. Stone for talking with us about artificial intelligence and the possibilities and pitfalls of a life with smart machines. Maybe one day this advanced technology will put the AI in Austin, or maybe at least a little more AU. Gold, money. Look, Siri wrote this bit, so maybe we have a long way to go. Anyway. If you like this video, please share it with your friends, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can, at Mr. Andrew Rosas, and also follow the Texas X's as well. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Rosas, reminding you to stay hooked.